YouTube us it going the gold house is back with divisional round score predictions only four games it's kind of weird only it's predicting scores the four games we take a look at the lines as well uh some big games toss-up games can't wait to watch them we'll have you covered live on Twitter with my takeaways play after play also talking about breaking news uh, anything that has to do with the offseason, the draft, we got you on the Twitter. Bunch of polls going up. You guys voted for these games, and we revealed who the fans voted for in, in our Pick'ems video. We'll continue to do that every year, every game from now uh, heading forward. So check out that Twitter. It's a must-follow. If you don't have one, make one. There's a link down below, description comments for that. Anything else, that sided app you see underneath me, there's a link down below for that as well. We have a page on there with polls. You, you vote, you leave a comment, you get likes, and you can win Amazon gift cards. It's pretty cool. Full NFL coverage, got playoff coverage, got offseason coverage going on right now, a lot more to come, so please subscribe, be much appreciated. Uh, let's take a look at the first game. Low-scoring game, it's kind of weird seeing a Packers game with, you know, 24-20, maybe to some, um, but it's a tough one. This is actually a tough one. As you guys know, I, I always pick off a matchup, you know, I... The, Sometimes, you know, it's just not the better team. You know, the matchup tells a lot, and that's usually how I pick. You know, I've been pretty successful picking games, uh, but the matchup says the Rams. It literally says the Rams, but I'm going to take the Packers because, you know, I do think the difference in quarterback play being in Lambeau in the playoffs, Packers are hot, feels like we know how good their offense is, feel like the defense is getting better. Um, you know, I, I, that that is the reason I'm taking them, but this is going to be a very tough task for the Packers. They haven't seen – the Rams specifically, I haven't seen the Rams defense, you know, nothing really anything. There's really nothing like it out there. I, I do think it's easily the best defense in football. You know, the Packers struggled with the Bucks defense, Rams, similar defense, but much better, much better, mainly in coverage. They're a lot better. Uh, but the, the similarities, I mean, they both run a 3-4, but they're both going to get pressure in different ways, whether it's from the edge with a guy like Leonard Floyd from inside with a guy like Aaron Donald, Michael Brockers, and they'll blitz too. You know, they'll blitz a ton. And they're locked down in coverage. So, um, yeah, I guess the tricky part, you know, offense seems to win championships in today's era. Defense could potentially uh, do that still. And I think why in this era, how, how, I guess, is, is a defense going to do that is because there's there's a lack of defenses where these teams aren't used to playing this good of a defense in this era. So all of a sudden it's kind of a, all of a, sudden it's kind of a surprise, like, what is this defense? We haven't seen this. You know, it's dominant. We can't get in our groove. And the Packers kind of, they do rely getting in their, in their groove, but they're a team that consistently do that more than anybody pretty much based on the regular season. Um, the, the key factor here is Devonta Adams versus, I'm not even going to say Jalen Ramsey. I'm going to say Devonta Adams, who is the best receiver in football this year. Jalen Ramsey happens to be the best corner. Uh, the Packers got one of the best corners as well. Uh, that's besides the point, but uh, in Jair Alexander. But, uh, yeah, Devontae Adams, you know, if you can eliminate him, that's what Jalen Ramsey and company, they they do a lot. They eliminate a team's best receiver, they take him away, make the, make the other guys beat them. That's going to make things tougher for the Packers. We've seen Valdez Scantling, we've seen Lazard help beat other teams, but can they do this against the best defense in football? So that's the question, but then it brings up, will Devontae Adams be shut down, taken away, slown down? He could be, uh, but people forget that Devontae Adams is pretty damn effective from the slot as well the question is will Ramsey follow him in the slot I don't know if I see him following him in the slot you know they have other guys capable you know they have a very good second secondary uh, of slowing him down but it's not going to be I don't think it's going to be the same you know with Jalen Ramsey slowing down DeAndre Hopkins early in the year uh, slowing down DK Metcalf whoever it may be you know along the year in the playoffs um, so I, I still think Adams is a factor I think the difference in quarterback play in the freezing cold in Lambeau I think that's the factor. Um, the Rams on offense, though, as well. You know, they can pound the football with Cam Akers, who's playing great. They can wear the Packers out. Uh, and they run a lot of, you know, quick motion, end around, quick slant, quick out. Uh, and that's where the Packers, if, if I had to point something out where they struggle on defense, I think, you know, what's a weakness? I think that type of offense is actually somewhat of weakness there. Uh, they've gotten better, though. You know, they, they prefer teams to take shots and, you know, Darnell Savage, uh, Jair Alexander, make the plays out there. You know, they prefer that. You know, they want Goff to do that, but he's not going to do that. So um, I just don't know if Goff and company is consistent enough. I think they'll have some success. Are they consistent enough? Uh, and they're not going to – I don't know if they're going to get that pick six to kind of get them on the board like they did, against, they did against Seattle, you know, against the Packers. So a lot of the matchup, you know, just how they match up with each other says the Rams. I'm taking the Packers, though. 
kind of going against what I usually do, but I'm feeling the Packers, so we'll see if that works out for me. Um, and the Packers are favored by 6.5, winning by 4, so it's, it's pretty tough. You know, if the Rams turn the ball over early, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. Um, if somehow the Rams get a turnover, you know, early, um, the Rams probably can win the game. So we'll see. Can't wait for it. Next game, Ravens, Bills. It's a tough one to predict the score, especially for the Bills. You know, I got them scoring 30, 30 to 27. That's kind of tough at the same time because I loved how the Ravens defense played last week. They played against a very good Titans offense who was pretty balanced. You know, they can run the ball at a high level, they can throw the ball at a high level, and they kind of took that away completely. So that was impressive. So is the Ravens defense back? You know, is this back to being, you know, two years ago I felt like it was an elite defense. Last year was a Great defense, and this year started off kind of great. I thought it went downhill a little bit. Still a good defense. Um, you know, are, are they back? You know, is that the defense there? Um, I think it's a different matchup. It's a whole different matchup than the Packers. You know, they, they run, they they blitz a lot. They're good at stacking the, or excuse me, not the Packers, the Titans. Um, for the Ravens, they they, uh, they 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 blitz a lot. They run a lot of man coverage. They stack the box a lot, um, and that's not really something you can do. You can do it. We'll see if it's effective against the Bills. We know it doesn't work out for them against the Chiefs. Bills a similar style offense, so uh, will it work out? You're gonna have to be better in coverage. They do have the corners to be successful in coverage, uh, but the question is. You know, those corners are, I mean, Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, the best cornerback duo in football. But what helps them be even better than they are when they're in coverage is that blitz gets after the quarterback, makes them, you know, they see them tighten coverage early. They can't throw it or they make a dumb decision, you know, throwing up for grabs basically. But, uh, you know, if that blitz isn't successful against Josh Allen, it's going to make everything else harder. They're going to eventually have to switch their defense. So I think we'll see some of that, you know, where it's not working. Uh, because Josh Allen does tend to beat the blitz. But then the question is, you know, sometimes the Bills start a little slow. Sometimes right out the gate they're going, then you can tell they're about to score over 30 points. Sometimes they're just, they, they start a little slow and they end up winning, though. They end up doing their thing. But if you start slow in this game, it's not going to be good. If you start slow and you're not scoring and the Ravens defense is stopping them early, I'm not, you know, I'm confident the Bills will get going at some point, you know, even if they do start slow. I'm not saying they will. Obviously, I have them winning, but then Lamar's going to take the ball. He's going to run the ball, run the clock, and, and it, it might be, uh, might be a problem. Might be a problem for them. It's supposed to snow. We'll see how, you know, Josh Allen can throw in the snow, see how Lamar Jackson can run in the snow. I'm not doubting either one. Um, but, yeah, you know, and the Ravens can get the ball outside with Lamar, with Dobbins, and that could be deadly for the Bills. They can control the time of possession and uh, how much they gain, you know, outgain the Bills. So it's it's this is a game that could go either way. You can argue both sides for sure. Uh, I think the last game you could as well. But I, I, got, I got the Bills by <clears throat> by 30 or by three, when scoring 30 points. Um, should be a great one. Uh, Browns and Chiefs, I got a high-scoring game here. Uh, and there, I was surprised by the, the spread of 10, the, the Chiefs are favored by 10, but I did have them winning by 10 at the same time, so maybe Vegas is on to something there, or maybe neither of us are on to something, I don't know. Uh, but I got the Chiefs winning 38-28, and the matchup by far says the Chiefs, why? Be, for multiple reasons, the Browns' defense has struggled with speed this year, the Chiefs are the ultimate speed team, maybe the Ravens. Uh, but that's who their defense struggled against, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I think downfield speed as well, like in the passing game, and that's just got Chiefs written all over it. And then, you know, if the Chiefs come out firing, you know, explain the weakness of the Browns, and that means they're scoring like crazy, Do, does the Browns' game get taken away? Their game is pound the football, wear the defense out, manage the time of possession, run a lot of play action, uh, and that works because they fear the run, but here's play action. Surprise, we're going to hit you with this downfield ball, this big play, sometimes Baker runs. But if they're down and are playing keep up, it's really not going to work. It's going to take away their run game more than they want to. It's going to take away their play action game more than they want to. So you could debate that, you know, if the Chiefs get up 14 0, the Browns probably aren't going to score 28 points. You know, 17 0 Chiefs, you know, right off the bat, the Browns aren't going to score much at all because it takes their whole game away and it's going to be even harder, way harder for them to play offense. Um, so that, that's the tough part there. But I, I still like, you know, the Browns coming out, pounding the football, getting some chunk yards, getting some points. Uh, getting the play action pass game going, um, you know, getting both running backs involved, uh, not just in the run game, but the pass game as well. Uh, and they'll score some points, but the Browns, at the same time in the matchup favoring the Chiefs, for those reasons I explained, the Browns do, you know, present a problem for these teams that are that are supposed to be <clears throat> supposed to be better than them, good teams, you know, because they'll wear you down. They, if they get the ball first and they'll do that and they'll run like seven minutes off the clock, which they can do, it sounds ridiculous, they can do. I mean, I, you know, I mean, they can do more than that, maybe. 
uh, eight, nine minutes, ten, ten minutes would be ridiculous. It's possible. But if they can do that, that is huge to start the game because that allow you know that doesn't that allows the other team to try to get on their groove quicker. Like if they don't, if they go three and out and they're kind of just sitting on the bench, you know, the offense, you know, just sitting there and you know not being able to get their offense going because of that, you know, that's a problem. So the Browns have that ability to do that to teams, you know, and they they make you know if you have to credit their defense some way, they make some plays. You know, they get the they take the ball away. So if they can do that. You know, they're, they're in business, but I think more of the matchup points towards the Chiefs at the same time. I think the Chiefs are the better team, you know, defending champs for a reason, maybe the favorites for me for a reason to win the Super Bowl again, even though they got some tough competition starting with the Browns right here. So that's why I'm going with the Chiefs 38 28. The Browns, guys, the Browns have to start with the ball. The coin toss is a big part of this game. Have to start with the ball. They have to wear them out, they have to run as much clock as they can. And then they're in business. I mean, if they could start with the def defensive score, too, I guess that works, but I, I doubt that. Uh, and then the this one's probably the main event of the week, the big game, one that I'm still back and f not really back and forth. I haven't really switched my pick or anything yet, but it's one that's still kind of up in the air for me, I suppose. But I don't like switching my pick, so I'm switching. I'm sticking with the Saints, but at the same time, I did pick the Bucks to go to the Super Bowl in, the, in preseason, so I am kind of technically going against my pick there. So it's a tough one. Um, and I see where the line is three. I have the. I think somebody's going to win by three. I got the Saints winning by three, 27-24, and um, it's going to be a good one. I, you know, I think problem is here the Buccaneers don't match up well with the Saints, and that's kind of been proven this year. And I, you know, in general, if you think about it, you know, the Bucks play a lot of soft coverage on defense, and they rely on getting pressure. They get pressure in multiple different ways. You know, whether it's from in, you know, interior. I think mainly from the blitz. You'll blitz their middle in, inside linebacker. Sometimes they pull Shaq Barrett around. It's almost like he's blitzing inside, but then the edge with Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul. Um, you know, so that's very good. You know, that, that sounds like a contending team with, with looking at their pressure and their ability to score on offense. You know, that sound, they're a legit team because of those things. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes, most of the time, you know, the Saints will eliminate that from you. You know, when you're that good at getting pressure, they'll eliminate that from you. And sometimes it shows up, though, still, and that's when teams beat them. You look at it's a whole different year, but you look at last year when the Saints played the Vikings, uh, you know, you weren't expecting it, but the Vikings were actually able to get more pressure than anybody against the Saints, and that's probably why they won the game. But it's so rare. Now, can the Bucks do that? Can they get that pressure? That would be a reason they win if they do, you know. Bowles is very good at finding unique ways, unique blitzes, blitz packages to get the pressure, and that could throw Breeze off, and that could be the reason they win the game. But the Saints are very good at game planning for that and eliminating that. So that's kind of why they match up well with them. They eliminate their strength, and they exploit their weakness, which the the, and the young secondary is pretty solid of the Bucks, but they play off a bit too much, and, the, and, the, and Breeze and the boys, Kamara, Michael Thomas, they're good at just getting the ball out quick, getting the ball underneath, and making plays after the catch. Uh, and that is another strength versus weakness here for the Saints. Uh, and then looking at you know the Saints defense, they 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 look like they match up well because they took the ball away from Tom Brady so many times. They played great game. I don't know if there's really a specific matchup that says the Saints. It just really got it kind of going off uh, that they played well last time. But it's every every game is different. So that one maybe I'm not that much more confident because you look at their offense, it actually matches up well on paper. Uh, against the Buccaneers, uh, I really, you know, the Buccaneers have gotten a lot more going downfield. The big plays, of playability with those receivers, Antonio Brown getting going, Brady getting better downfield. And I do think you can throw downfield on the Saints secondary. So let's see if this time around they could exploit that. Perhaps uh, it's not like it's very weak or anything, but maybe that that's the difference. This time they're able to do that. Um, you know, and something else you look at, you know, they, they haven't played each other. I think it was week eight. They played each other week one, week eight. So f basically twice in the first half of the season. And we knew the Bucks were not going to be a first half of the season team. We knew they'd be pretty good in the first half of the season, but this is their time. So maybe seeing them now is a bad thing for the Saints. Uh, the Saints are probably going to have a somewhat of a similar game plan. You know, I don't, you know, a lot of people are picking the Bucks because third time's a charm. And I understand third time the charm, but that's really not the reason, but you know, it, it's you know to pick the Bucks, but it kind of has to do with that uh, because when you when you beat a team so bad, you run the same game plan because you, if you go against it and you lose, it's like wow, we went away from what works. So the Saints are going to be having a similar game plan from they, when they beat up the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers will adjust to that and they'll bring something different. So um, coaching staff could win the game for the Buccaneers with that adjustment. So that would be the re another reason the Buccaneers could win. So you can see you can debate both sides there. 
Um, but I, I just think more from when it's this close, I'm going with the matchup. I think more of the matchup says the Saints because they can slow down their the Buccaneers' strength on defense, the pass rush. They can exploit the soft coverage of the – hey, who knows? Maybe they were saving some tight coverage, some press man. For some reason, they ran press man against the Chiefs when that's absolutely when they shouldn't have ran it. So I don't know. Maybe they'll do that now. Um, maybe they're saving some – I don't know. Uh, I think more of the matchup – it goes with the Saints, and that's what I'm going with. Um, I trust their defense a little more, even though I, you know, I don't know if their defense is going to have a, uh, an outstanding game like they did last time. I don't really think it's going to happen, but uh, we will find out. It's good. Brady versus Breeze. It's going to be a good one. Uh, I think whoever gets more pressure on the quarterback wins. You know, I, I think that's what it is. I think uh, it doesn't have to be sacks. I think whatever pressure unit, edge or anything, the whole defense gets more pressure wins the Buccaneers can get it in more ways so that would be a reason to argue with the Buccaneers um they do rely on the blitz a little bit though but the Saints uh Hendrickson should be back Cam Jordan they'll blitz to Mario Davis here and there um and they got some interior guys as well it's gonna be good it's gonna be good um you know I guess whoever gets I think it kind of links with it you know if whoever gets more pressure will win because I think that quarterback that's getting pressure more will probably make that it might only be one mistake. It could be two mistakes. Um, so it's kind of linked. Who will get more pressure? Who will make the least amount of mistakes? Those teams, which should go together, uh, will win the game. It should. It should be a great one. I cannot wait. I can't wait for all these games. Really, the, I think the NFC games. Really, I mean the other ones too. You know, but the NFC games is, um, you know, third time these two teams are playing. The other one, it's just the matchup really favors the Rams. But Packers got to be the better team. Are the Rams consistent enough? So in the cold, you know, so. A lot, a lot of questions, I guess, that we're waiting for, for it to get answered here uh, in a playoff atmosphere, atmosphere. So I'm very excited for all that. Uh, follow our Twitter, and we'll have you covered, you know, step-by-step step throughout the games. Uh, breaking news on that Twitter as well, always discussing all that. You know, more predictions, more content on there, really. So check it out. Smash the like button, subscribe, turn notifications on, all that would be much appreciated. Uh, that's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.